This is time for nest of the century. Now, we've had a little conflab and we decided that we couldn't just show it to you because you might get too excited too quickly. <laughs> so we're going to break you in gently. Firstly, with its call. So, ladies and gentlemen, young people, I give you the chur of the nightjar. Oh, yes, listen to that. 30 or 40 notes per second given by the male after a long journey all the way back from equatorial Africa whilst he's perched in a tree. New science says there's two different types of chur given at different times depending on the breeding cycle. Simply exquisite and excellent the sound of heathland in summer the ch i wish i could <laughs> chur like that so, it, it sounds a bit like a moped in the wrong gear sounds a bit like an early human league sample <laughs> doesn't it really excellent so that's the song of the bird that's the song quite unique in the uk nothing else like it it is a unique sound and it's a unique looking bird but really difficult to spot it's nocturnal and if you're lucky oh you'd get a shot of it like that you can see it the colorings it looks just like bark so incredibly well camouflaged and when they fly they kind of look the same shape as a kestrel you can see all those brown feathers underneath and as chris said it's just arrived from africa well in late april so that's what this amazing bird looks like and i say oh that's the male with the white marks under its under its wings Fantastic bird. Of course, they arrive here and they get straight down to their courtship behaviour, which, given that they're crepuscular or nocturnal, is very difficult to see. So here we're looking at a thermal camera, and here's the male. But look what it's doing with its wings. It's flicking them up over its back and wing clapping. They don't chur in flight, but they wing clap. Listen to that. Here are two males together, pursuing one another. Oh, my goodness me, glowing in the dark. It's a bit much, isn't it, really? And then one of them settles down on a fence, presumably close to a female that it's trying to attract. And this season, right here, right in the field around here, this was seen at Wild Ken Hill. Yes, they were seeing night jars for the first time in 16 years. They are signs of possible breeding pair. And in the last four weeks, two males and one female have been seen and the males doing that displaying behavior and they've seen a bit of nesting behavior as well so fingers crossed that they will start nesting because it, it's sort of late May early June that that happens so it could be any time now. Not too many here at the moment but uh, just down the road there is a place where there's a high density of night jars so I went down there not one evening not two but three <laughs> evenings looking for the birds they can be very difficult to see it was a bit cold if I'm honest with you and we were about to give up and I well well this is what happened. We came we looked we listened uh, we heard them, but we didn't see them, which could be deemed disappointing. But night jars are a very elusive bird in the evening. But I've got to confess, I've got a bit of a trick up my sleeve. Because earlier today, in fact, first thing this morning, we came out to a site just over there. There's a night jar flying straight by there. Look, unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were just wrapping it up, about to say we didn't see them, and one just flew right past us. Ha <laughs> ha! Superb! Never, ever give up until the fat nightjar stops singing and starts flying. Oh, yes! Now, as I mentioned there, I did have a trick up my sleeve, which I'd been preparing that morning, and I can tell you now that the fat nightjar has stopped singing, and I think you're just about ready for this. Let's go live to our nightjar's nest. Oh! Something's just burst. <laughs> oh, please! No, no, I think I've ruptured myself. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, my goodness me! It's absolutely extraordinary. This is the female sat on the nest live. Look at the vermicular plumage. It's so, so beautiful. An excellent camouflage. 
Oh, so, so good, isn't it's it? It's so, so still oh, at I the know. moment. Well, that's their job. They just sit absolutely stock still most of the time. But we have seen some activity throughout the course of the day. Oh, 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 oh. a bit of fidgeting. Oh, hold on. Oh, fidget. A little bit of preening. Huge excitement Open because the it's eye. moved. Reaching over its back. Oh, I love it when night jars reach over their back. In fact, I love it when they do anything. But look at that, yeah, a little bit of preening. And there you can see the context of the bird. Oh, now I bet she's just going to... Oh, no, no, a bit more preening. Oh, delicious, absolutely delicious. Truly superb. And there again, look, you can see the wing, every feather. It's not just about the colour, it's about the contrast. Because mammalian ground predators have dichromatic vision and as a consequence, it's not just about the colour, it's the contrast. Perfectly contrasted to hide. But look, she's been active in the daytime. We've seen all sorts of sensational stuff like sitting very still <laughs> for quite a long time. But you've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. If you're watching this nest on our live cameras from 12 noon to 9.30 at night, be patient because eventually you'll see something interesting happening. She just cracks her eye open because a, a big eye, glassy eye, would break down the camouflage. And there you can see the tail looking like a piece of broken bark. And that cream patterning there, breaking up her outline. Disruptive coloration, we call it. And we've mimicked that on battleships. And there, look, look on the right-hand side, the rictal bristles. Oh, I wish I could stroke those rictal bristles. <laughs> Honestly, they're like, well, we think they could be like whiskers, but they don't have lots of nerves at their base, so they're not like mammalian whiskers which could be used to help capture the prey. They could be guarding the very large eyes which they open. Oh, oh look, look at, at the that. mouth! Oh, look at the mouth! <laughs> it's enormous! A giant pink cavern. Just sensational. But those ritual bristles could be there to protect the very large eyes. And look oh. here! She spotted something. Something, probably an insect, is buzzing around her while she's on the nest. Look at the eyes. Mick. It's, Mick. it's like it's like it's on remote control. That's oh, insane. It's just bonkers, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely bonkers. But that's how she finds her prey at night, and they swoop through the air using the silhouettes of large moths. They swoop up underneath them and take them. Normally moths with a wingspan of larger than six centimetres. Can I, can I just ask you an honest question? I want an honest What's answer. Do you, do you like them? Do you like oh, night jars? Night Goodness moss. gracious, I don't think that I've ever seen you so excited. Pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. They are extraordinary looking birds. And we have had a little bit of action, mainly at dusk and dawn, just before we lose the light. And listen to that. That is that's a bubbling sound. That's made by the female. And that's the clucking reply from the male. And those calls signify a nest change. So the female flies off and the male comes in and takes over incubating those eggs in the nest. And then just like vanishes, look. It does just look vanishes just... into the heathland. <laughs> into the darkness. Sometimes we've seen the male returning and a proper nest change over where the females remained there to check that he's the right male. Look at this, female on the nest. She becomes active, she's heard him coming, he's given that call, he lands, look at the white feathers and then fanning the tail, oh yes. And she's able to identify him because of the precise white patterning in his tail. She checks him out again. What she doesn't want to do is leave if it's not her male. She's confident that it is her male, and after a while, he waddles over and settles down on the two beautiful marbled eggs. Do you know what you remind me of right now? You remind me of the heron chick that swallowed too much and had to take a rest, and you've just kind of sit down. swallowed too much excitement, and you've just got to have a little sit down now. Okay, I'll take it easy then. <laughs> Why don't we do an item about, I don't know, wood, wood lice or something? Oh, okay.